Have you ever felt when you are in extreme hunger, you tend to eat fast on anything that is presented in front of you? Well, it certainly do for me. But is it the same happening for tiny microorganisms such as bacteria? You will find out soon. Like many organisms, bacteria faces many challenges in nature. One of the biggest challenges they often encounter is the limitations of nitrogen sources. Nitrogen is important for forming things like DNA, RNA, and amino acids, all of which are required for the proper functioning of the cells. However, some bacteria such as the pathogen enterohemorrhagic E. coli, which is known as e bacteria that causes a severe diarrhea in humans, are known to survive in many environments such as in the marine system, river waters, and even in crops, all of which are known to be nitrogen-limited environments. Question is, how are they able to survive in those conditions that we thought would be difficult to survive, much less growing in them? Are they able to utilize all the sources at a very fast rate or at different rates? To understand this, I use a common laboratory bacteria known as E. coli and staff them for 1 hour and 24 hours and supply them various nitrogen sources. My finding shows that despite this starvation period, all of them are still surviving and that ammonium supports the fastest growth making them as the preferred nitrogen sources. As for the others, its utilizations are much more slower. A cherry picker, I would say. Considering that in this E. coli there is nitrogen preference, I want to know if other variants of E. coli, especially those with pathogenic nature, do they too have similar nitrogen preference or that they're able to use all the sources equally well and fast? The answer is yes, they do have nitrogen preference and for all of them, they have almost similar preference as those found in laboratory E. coli. But what strikes the most in this part of my study is that the presence of L-methionine, which is an amino acid nitrogen containing compound, causes a decline in the pathogen's e bacteria. This is revolutionary because it seems to suggest some amino acids have antimicrobial property that could serve as an alternative to treat and pathogens induced diseases such as e bacteria. To summarize it all, let's go back to our first question. Do bacteria eat fast when they are under hunger? Not really, but they are able to survive in long period of starvation. Not all bacteria are able to use all nitrogen-containing compounds. Some of them are even costing their life. Thank you.